Hey, welcome everyone. It's new. Check it out. We got a build showcase video for you today on my Caustic Arrow Pathfinder full blown magic find build. You can see the character there in the true magic find apparel. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about this build. This is the final iteration of it. So we're going to be showing it off. Talk about it from start to finish. It began as a toxic rain build. And I'll give you the scoop on that. How it's been going this league, of course. Then I'll give you a proper map showcase where I'll actually be uh, teasing. Something I haven't even shown on live Twitch yet, which is some Abyss farming with plus two proj maps, which this build is actually uniquely quite suited for. We'll talk about that when the time comes. And I will not probably be making a full-blown guide on that for reasons I'll explain during the map. But, you know, this is sort of one little place to be able to see that strategy play itself out. Then we'll get into the gear and the gems, then the passives and the path of building, get into all the numbers like the usual. So let's get started. This is a Pathfinder League starter. I feel like I just start Pathfinder every single time now. I really can't get away from it. Poisonous Concoction to start or Toxic Rain to start or Poisonous Concoction into Toxic Rain into Caustic Arrow. <laughs> The start really some of my favorite skills absolutely love them i haven't really played a caustic arrow build until uh, since i guess it was maybe calandra league start i think i had a caustic arrow champion actually at that time that was a fun build but i knew i wanted to try caustic arrow and magic find together but i was especially looking at toxic rain as the first few days of the league because i don't really like the way caustic arrow scales on like five divine budget i feel like the quill rain setup is perfectly suitable. I feel like Enraged Strongbox is very, very well tailored for a pure Toxic Rain setup. I'm talking Toxic Rain self-cast, Toxic Rain Ballista, self-cast Ballista setup. So it's like a double Toxic Rain setup, as opposed to now where I have Toxic Rain in the Ballista, but Caustic Arrow Aero Nova support. And so this is a very classic setup, uh, not Ballista focused, but rather self-cast, self-agency focused. That's the way I like to play. I like to be the one in control of the skill. And I like to be able to carpet bomb a strong box as I'm opening it before I'm opening it, even when my character is very weak and kind of seem to pull that off pretty well. Wearing a bunch of magic fine gear works for Toxic Rain or Caustic Arrow because it doesn't scale all that well off gear. Generally speaking, it scales much more so awesome of the passive skill tree, which we will see, of course. But the, obviously the build can scale fairly well, and I have invested... Uh, somewhere uh, around 70 80 divines plus a headhunter and so this is well under a mirror budget in here so it's achievable for a lot of you anyway and i'm going to be doing a map showcase next so let's go ahead and get that out of the way so here it is this is a plus two additional projectiles map which is spawned into plus three once you have a wandering path set up and all the increased effective modifiers non-unique maps this is going to look very similar to a strat that has been popularized by a content creator named Guratha. And that involves trying to cherry pick the wisp juice if you can. You get a lot of purple, which increases monsters projectiles, which in conjunction with a map mod rolled this way and a gilded or winged abyss garb forces Siggy and Spires out, which will spawn an excessive and absolute ton of rare monsters at the end. If everything works out well and so long as you don't kill the spy really quick which this build is quite good at not doing <laughs> and this is not the exact strategy in Garatha's strat but uh, I decided you know because I love Enraged Strongbox so much I decided to pull some of the points out from where uh, he had them in and throw them in Enraged Strongbox so this was a strategy I landed on this will not be posted in a link max roll links seem to be broken right now but uh, you can take a snapshot of it right here and so there it is okay as far as the sextants and the scarabs are concerned well here they are we're going to be doing abyss plus one could do plus two if you want beyond because beyond and abyss go very well together uh in rage strong box regular strong box will not be forcing delirium on the map although i'd like it to spawn there randomly if possible giving it over 50 percent chance I'll go ahead and squeeze in a little bit of ritual in here because i feel like ritual still works really well but yeah most of the full-blown abyss is in there and the strong box in there too. A very comfy uh, atlas and very good for tier sevens with Dance of Destruction. As this is a tier seven, my build could not handle this on T16. Forget about it. If it had a whole bunch of wisp juice, not happening. For the record, it can totally do it on regular T16. You know, like last league, a league before, a league before that, a league before that. And that was kind of one of the unfortunate things that occurred to me this league. Is I picked a league starter that is super strong, super comfy, magic fine build up to a certain threshold. But if the game were to be balanced uniquely difficultly, 
this league. Well, this build's going to have some problems. That's exactly what happened this league. So that's why uh, this is the final showcase. We're going to be moving away from Caustic Arrow after this. But anyway, here we go. We're going to select Ambush. And, you know, Garatha had a lot of points in like 7th Gate and stuff. But I didn't have to do that because I went Ambush. So I'm losing an Abyss on each map. So that it does hurt a little bit. But it's cool. I get to combine these two strats. And again, there's nothing there on the Atlas uh, for selecting an Eldritch Influence. And the Stygian boss cannot spawn on Tier 7, actually. So that's part of the reason why Cemetery is chosen, of course, for the uniquely good layout and divination cards as well. Of course, we got to start with the Wildwood. People are always curious about the Wildwood, how to go about it. Yeah, usually, you know, there's a lot of different rules of thumb to follow. I think Fubgun came out with a video on this. Uh, I think uh, T Tuna does also have a video on this. I'm probably going to make my own video on this. I think once I get a nice sample size, I'm going to kind of track my average wisps on there to see how I do. Uh, but anyway, I am not doing a very good job getting purple, so that's unfortunate. I was really hoping I might get some purple, but I'm kind of relegated to whatever I get. So we got a blue and yellow on this round. Blue trail getting a little weak. Got a little bit of a one up there on the wisp, and I do see some purple. So I'm going to V-line straight for it. Got lucky there. Uh, was, uh, I'm not going to select that, especially on a map showcase. Probably wouldn't anyway. Don't like losing all my evasion. Where did that purple trail go after all that? It's weird. It kind of disappeared on me. Oh, that's unfortunate. Or fortunate. Strange how these things just sometimes work out. All right, so this map is actually going to look pretty decent. I got at least a thousand of each, I think. I'm not really sure where to go next. I'm, I'm not being super methodical because I'm in a map showcase. Just kind of want to get through it. Uh, I mean, I, I, I got to be more than satisfied with this because I'm not taking this actually all that seriously. But anyway, okay, still, still going here. This is going to be a fair showcase. These mobs are not going to be easy with this much use on here. No. Okay, finally I did it. And, you know, I like making currency, so if it's juiced up this well. Really? Well, it's it's going to be one hell of a showcase maybe on the loot. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a little extra time in here and make sure we get, get all this juice. Because this might be one of the best maps I've had this league, actually. Crazy enough. Uh, didn't expect to see this coming, but okay, I'm going to... Try and get everything I can. Looking at uh, nice even around 1,800 of each. With a full-blown permanent 100% increased rarity and increased item quantity of items found. My character has 86% increased item quantity and 445% increased item rarity. That helps with the tinctures and the flask set up here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but you can see with the extra buffs, uh, these numbers are quite high uh, on the player side. And player side is the most important because that's the one that's kind of the, the smallest number. Okay, my friends, I think I'm good and ready. Yeah, there's a little bit more down here. And, you know, that's funny. I didn't quite reach 2k of anything. But anyway, let's get out of here and let's uh, go run this map. Hopefully we don't have too many problems. I might just get slapped instantly. I got a weapon swap with Invictus, so I throw down a Val Caustic Arrow and do a weapon swap. Usually something to die in that time. I got a Malevolence that's for free with uh, Divine Blessing support, so that's fun too. I guess uh, Delirium Mirror did not spawn on this map. I'll have to double check it. But anyway, here we go. Abyss starting in. It's kind of nonchalant at first. You're really just waiting for the end. Uh, sometimes the Abyss doesn't track very well. I've even had situations where the Abyssal Spire did not spawn at the end. I think it just spawned at like a terrible point and like wasn't able to release. And, and believe me, I killed all the monsters around it. It wasn't an issue of a failure on my part, but it just didn't spawn. I've also had a lot of issues with the abysses just straight up not spawning in the map. I don't know if they're spawning in the wildwood and I'm just losing them, never see them, or what. I have a lot of maps where, you know, this map setup, I'm supposed to have five, three or four abysses on every map. Or actually, potentially five. Potentially five because, you know, I could get a fifth one that just spawned completely randomly, I guess. Oh, well, here we go. That's that's a weak conversion. Only one. The reliquary key, yeah. All right, where's the spire here? Everything's dead. 
They're coming out dying. All right, there we go. So Spire, you need to not one-shot the Spire. It needs to have its chance. You can see the spawns there. All right, I, I, yeah, that's all three of them there. This is going to be absolute metric ton of monsters. See here, I'm pushing out the caustic arrow. It's got to be careful. i got to keep moving. <laughs> Bro, this is gift. Uh, you can die pretty easily there, uh, but wow, okay. <laughs> that's a lot. And you know what? I wouldn't surprise this. Probably some of you are watching this right now and be like, dude, I never see that much loot in my map. We have to understand. I got I got a strategy that's super juiced. I'm wearing a lot of magic fine gear. I got the bonus quant and rarity multipliers from inside the map. That's like a not even a one in one hundred kind of possibility. Extraordinarily rare. Uh, but that's not really the real reason happening. It's because I'm choosing a, a mapping strategy that is very powerful. This abyss plus one proc strat is very good, of course. And I got I got a character with a lot of magic find on. And then I did a, ve a very good job on the Wisping, apparently, without really expecting to. Uh, I got like 1,800 of each. And, you know, while that's not 10k, having an even spread, there does seem to be some sort of inherent multiplicative quant multiplier or something between the Wisp when, when they're actually empowered by all three. Seems to have quite an impact. Uh, really a little disappointed that a, a Blight spawned in here. I have to do it, of course, on a map this good. Uh, but it's going to be time-consuming for the video. But, oh, well, I'll just go ahead and get this done, get it out of the way. Not really expecting to have any problems killing stuff, but I don't know. If you took this halfway seriously, I guess you'd try to you know, do some of this. They're spawning from different prongs here, so it will be done faster, at least. So this is only tier 7, but these mobs are beefed up a fair bit. And in my opinion, these monsters with this much wisp juice, yeah, especially if they're triple empowered, they definitely have way more health than the normal monsters do on T16, a regular T16. So, I mean, you're going to have to kind of use your imagination a little bit to imagine what this would be like on a just generic tier 16. Uh, but, but, you know, it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid, and, and I think it, it looks even better. So you might notice that... Uh, I only have one abyss. I've only done one abyss, and there only seems to be one abyss. So this again, it's supposed to be minimum three. Three abyss on every map, but I've only seen one, and I don't know. I'm having I have a feeling it's not gonna be a single one up the top right. Maybe there is, but no, I've had plenty of maps that only spawned one. And yeah, there's not a single one. So I don't really understand what I'm supposed to do when I'm investing so much currency into abyss. <laughs> I guess I just have to not run Strongbox, because that's a real letdown, especially with how well I juiced that map up. I only got one Bist on the map. It even spawned Blight, like random mechanics. So is it really getting knocked out by other League mechanics? I mean, there's no Eldritch minion spawns or anything. It seems like there's enough, plenty of space here for it to spawn. I find it hard to believe. This happened to me a lot. I did 16 maps like this. I think only like half of them did I even get the proper number of abysses, as in three or more. So, yeah, I'm pretty disturbed by that, and, well, you, you get to see right there in the showcase, clear as day, why I'm not a huge fan of the strat. Um, again, maybe it's the fact that I'm throwing strong boxes on the map that's just ruining everything, canceling out the abyss, but I don't know. I don't even see the abyss. I put the abyss there. I want them to be there. They're not showing up. What am I supposed to do with that? Every time I do strong box and legion, that all shows up. The legions all show up. The expedition shows up. The strong boxes all show up. Never a problem. So for some reason, the abyss just doesn't show up. Again, that was uh, that was plus one abyss there, and a winged abyss scarab. That's a minimum of three abyss. So you can see I'm pretty disappointed in that. I worked hard for that wisp juice. I got. I still got good loot, obviously. Uh, but imagine if I had gotten two or three more abysses in there. What this would have looked like. Would have looked a lot better. Anyway, <laughs> before I get in a bad mood, let's go over the gear. So, uh, I tell people you should probably switch to from Toxic Rain to Caustic Arrow. Somewhere around the 15 to 30 Divine Mark, which is basically at the point which you're going to craft arguably the most expensive item in the build, not counting Headhunter. Which is going to be a very nice double dot multi quiver it does not need to be this well rolled i actually had this and it was like double tier three on the prefix side uh, but i ended up uh, paying a little extra to redo the prefixes and roll over it again i made a video about how to craft that as well as the amulet 
which is a perfectly rolled amulet. Very fortunate with the divines. Uh, there's a separate video on these, but anyway, I, I planned these items out way before the league even started. So I knew I was going to have these two items. Quite easy to craft, actually, with the tools that we have at our disposal. Widow Hail is paired with a Great Quiver, which is tripling the effectiveness, more than tripling the effectiveness of all the mods over here. And it does not need to be supported by level 10 blind. Uh, it can just be, it can actually be faster attacks with uh, the Harvest craft, which may in fact be better, depending on uh, what you're going for. But I like the blind there. Very lucky to find this. I uh, can't remember how much I paid for it. But anyway, everything in here is like less than 100 divine, not counting the Headhunter. We got a uh, Ventor's Gamble, which, well, actually, maybe not less than 100 divine because this league, Ventor's Gamble, is a wildly priced. Uh, I think this Ventor is like 30 divines, actually, now that I think about it. But I really needed these resists to be up there because I don't have, I actually don't even have capped lightning res with that much lightning res. I was using a different Elegant Hubris at one point who had lightning res, but uh, this works out because, you know, I mean, Divination just lights up like, basically the whole time anyway. Okay, uh, it is then multiplied by Calander's Touch, which, uh, yeah, when I say less than 100 divines, I'm, I'm honestly not imagining Calander's Touch. I'm imagining like a separate Ventor then. So I guess I'm mistaken. Now, at this point, it, it, it is definitely over 100 divines, plus the Headhunter. Um, for some reason, I'm a little stuck in the past in my head here when I was running two separate Ventors that were a little worse than this. Uh, so yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we're looking at about 120, 130 divine budget, <laughs> counting everything. I crafted a helmet. I do not have a video on how I crafted this helmet. Uh, I was kind of hoping for plus two AOE with increased area of effect instead of the uh, chosen mod that I got, but that's okay. Pretty easy to craft. Just use uh, fossils, light fossils, till you hit double tier one suffix. Keep the prefix open. Eldritch craft with Eldritch Chaos Orbs, Eldritch Anul, Eldritch Exalt, till you, you hit, it's very easy. You just gotta hit T1 max life and then uh, isling it off, but you kind of have to do the uh, to Isling, you have to have, um, you can roll up to three modifiers and then the suffix cannot be changed, based on there. Hit that right. Uh, then we got a Headhunter, which is absolutely not necessary for this build. It kind of is for the strat that I'm doing and this League mechanic, as hard as it is. Uh, but it doesn't really help Caustic Arrow that much, scaling a damage. It's just there for defense and for some quality of life. And I think this build, most Leagues, will be better served by Mage Blood setup, actually. Because we'll have a Tincture and we'll have a Mage Blood. And it'll just be, you know, running faster and the resists will be solved more easily. And, you know, we won't get that much out of the Headhunter and won't need as much out of the Headhunter because the content will be easier and the rewards will be less under most Leagues. Like last League, for example. Calm Spirit is very debatable. A lot of people are suggesting this is really bad now. Well, I mean, obviously it gives me some rage. I don't need the life on hit so much. Uh, or the life regen so much, I mean. If we see here, you know, my life regen's a little bit. I got Berserk on left click. You know, it goes up. And, you know, if you actually take out your stopwatch and you, you were to, like, you know, calc this out, it it, it comes up to around 50% uptime anyway. It's really not bad. And so there are a few different things I've put in the gloves. I don't want to put Sedimas in here. I figured uh, Calm Spirit's going to work well. It, it worked out so it's amazingly well when I had Vol's Vision and uh, Calm Spirit early on. They were so cheap and it was so easy to put up. And then of course I had the Gull Helm and even Blunderboy in here which has the Replenishing Shrine which is a useless shrine by most people's measure. Gave me an immense amount of life regen for uh, Calm Spirit. It's a, a terrific setup. Didn't see that one coming before League Start. Absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, but this is, you know, the vinyl iteration with an actual Greed's Embrace which I didn't talk about. Uh, for this build you're going to have to have at least a plus two. The blue wisps deal a lot of extra crit damage, and I was putting points over here uh, to get the enemies poisoned by you cannot deal critical strikes, but I decided to opt back out of that to get a little bit more scaling, and just went for this corruption on the chest anyway. Felt like maybe a bit better, better setup. So yeah, that is it for the gear. Oh, almost uh, forgot the flasks. So perfectly rolled flasks here. Tincture connected to a <laughs> 3% life flask, getting a lot of life regen. Uh, from the suffix on this gold flask, and then, you know, Divination Dislike being cranked up for its, uh, well, I suppose it's resist and its quantum rarity. Reduced mana cost of skills during flask effect combined with Pathfinder is extremely important for this build, which we'll get into next. I think I'll dive straight into the gems now. Oh yeah, and 50% uh, chance to avoid stun is how I'm avoiding stun. On Pathfinder, this is 100% chance. So that's pretty fun. Sulfur Flask was, I uh, was using a Jade Flask, but I realized I could survive fine, especially going down tier 7. The Sulfur Flask is actually way to go. Wasn't planned in League Start, but kind of warped into it. Now, for the reduced mana cost of skills during effect, I have 22 mana, but when I use all the things, I have suddenly 2 mana. 
and uh, malevolence with alchemist genius anyway is almost free is almost free but I can't cast malevolence at all when it goes down which we'll see in a second 300 mana yeah so this is a setup where I have uh, oh yeah it's over here I have malevolence connected to inspiration support and divine blessing support frost blink also gets a little cheaper that way and frost blink is basically actually it is free once I get that here so that is a cool way to squeeze in an extra ore. The other ores are haste, vitality for the life regen, grace, and precision. However, vitality is only level 16 because I kind of, you know, had issues with my mana. I felt like uh, anything less than 50 mana was kind of causing me problems. I do have mana on hit though, uh, through primal spirit on the passive skill tree. Precision is used to help for poison on hit for the uh, monsters can't do crits when they're poisoned. Now it's just used for two things. It's going to be for life on hit and wither on hit. So wither is actually something that we just take for granted. Like it's just going to be on everything at all time. If you have like no hit, which this build otherwise doesn't need any hit. Uh, Caustic Arrow doesn't really need to hit things with this setup. Because Arrow Nova is going to go off and create the puddles anyway. The Even the toxic, or the, uh, yeah, the toxic rain still hits with AoE and doesn't actually require you to have a hit rating to score the hits. And doesn't have any other hit component involved. So this build, on its face, doesn't require any hit. But if you want to wither, you still need hit. If you want any life on hit, you need hit. If you want to poison, for whatever reason, you need hit. So I don't have a 100% chance to hit, not even close. Uh, but at least I went I went from something like 20 to 70% chance to hit. Some, something like that, yeah. Or I guess 81% chance to hit. Maybe more with the uh, blind, I suppose. So that worked out nice and is allowing me to score wither in a big way. And then, okay, we got, yeah, so Haste, Grace, not Val Haste, because I want all of my uh, Val Souls to go into da -da -da -da, Caustic Arrow, Val Caustic Arrow, traditional Val Caustic Arrow, not Caustic Arrow Poison. Uh, that is a different build. You need higher hit base damage. You're not scaling levels of gem. You're scaling other things. So without a plus four chest, I'm at 28. With the Blunderbore, I had a plus four. I had a 30. It was huge damage. Really feel good. It was performed even pretty well at tier 16. Even with some Wisp Juice. All corrupted 2120 gems. Uh, but the Awakened gems are all 520 I think. And these are the highest DPS gems that I can get in. For the most damage. It makes the puddles not last long. But that doesn't matter. You know if I'm able to attack plenty of times a second. Alright. And then over here we got the Ballista Focus Ballista setup. With Efficacy. Awaken. Vicious Projectiles. Which is really good for a Focus Ballista setup. Because you don't actually lose the attack speed that way I think and avoid manipulation and then toxic rain of withering so that's a new uh transfigured gem that is allowing me to get extra withers out more quickly more reliably don't really need the dps the single target dps of toxic rain this one does a little less damage uh, as far as single target but functionally adds a, a nice quality of life there all right so we went over the auras already went over that link that link and then over here we got berserk we got cast and damage taken immortal call and blood rage so casting damage taking a mortal call works out nicely because i have a decent amount of evasion nothing crazy though 50 percent uh, but the big reason why it works out is because of the passive skills which we'll get into now over here my elegant hubris i have endurance charge gained every second if you've been hit recently very very good for a immortal call casting damage taken setup and then I also got uh, Spell Suppress, exactly Spell Suppress, capped with literally 100% precisely with this extra node. Got uh, three triple rarities as well, which is really cool. And then 80% chance to avoid Shock, which is being supported by Storm Shroud. And then the Thick Skin Wheel over here, something I like to do normally. So this is just a lot of my builds recently matched my builds and featured an elegant hubris in the slot i'm quite aware with different elegant hubris the numbers in here do different things this one seemed surprisingly well for my build with the suppress i was 12 percent sh short on suppress cap you know i could have got it different ways of course if i wanted to with charms and things uh but at any rate supreme ostentation i am nowhere near uh have high enough <laughs> attributes to support this build a nice little bonus there the build, you know, all the passive skills, just the typical stuff here for some increased life, some increased damage here, increased damage here. 
basically in the passive skill tree primarily you're just scaling life and damage and, uh, of course some aura effect here big damage point here some life here okay got some of the connectors here more life here basic jewels giving me a lot of life helping with the mana reservation and in some cases some reduced skill effect cost like right here Corrupted Blood Immunity right here. Still a decent jewel otherwise. And then we got the new, that which was taking jewel. Now this there's nothing special about this jewel. The only thing that I needed out of this was 12% mana reservation skills. That was it. Uh, but all three other things on there are usable and serviceable for the build. But nothing special really. Uh, da, 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 revenge the Hated. Yes, all right. So we got the Spell Spread Cap. And then we got some Medium Clusters. So Eternal Suffering, Student of Decay. Pretty good there to help with my weak, weak chaos res. <laughs> uh, unwaveringly evil is really, really good uh, because I can still get stunned potentially when my flask is down. So that's kind of cool. Then we got uh, unholy grace and touch of cruelty. I got two touch of cruelties here. And normally these are will not have any impact on here, but they can be quite powerful if somehow you're able to score some chaos spells. And I can through the aspect of the spider here. It's one reason why I like aspect of the spider. It helps slow enemies down. And it makes them increase, take increased damage. And then even more increased damage taken. And this build does not scale increased damage taken very well. We don't have elemental penetration. You know, we have wither, I guess. But that's, you know, that's about it. So that helps nice. And then unspeakable gifts to get one of those in there. Really, really nice. So we got, yeah, two really great large cluster setups. I uh, couldn't quite fit in four mediums. I would if I could, but I uh, can't do that here. We've got increased AOE. I almost forgot about this one here. So yeah, basically every every point, you know, it's a cap spell spread, get life. And well, we have to get this functionality here because Divination Dislate won't go on without this mastery. And then, you know, get damage. Damage, life, cap, the necessary spell suppress cap. Gets this elegant hubris, get some cool little tools up here. Life recovered when regeneration is not implied. Hugely important for this build. We don't have that much life recovery for this build. And so, you know, once I dropped um, that ring. So I forget the name of the ring. Thief's Torment. There it is. Thief's Torment. Once I drop that ring, suddenly my uh, just natural in combat life recovery goes out the window. And if I'm going to run Calm's Heart, especially with Blood Rage, I'm going to really need this recovery. This has saved my life countless times. On there and then uh you know some extra life there so that anyway that's it for the passives except for the ascendancy aids i guess so we got master surgeon so that allows me to run the match fine divination dislike permanently that in conjunction with this mastery enables it so it works all the time nature's adrenaline obvious choice there nature's reprisal obvious choice and then nature's boon giving me some extra um oomph on the passive or the uh, sorry the magic flasks which is, includes things like the reduced mana cost of skills includes things like the Avoid stun and the regeneration here, the damage from the sulfur flask, the speed from the quicksilver flask, all very useful. The tincture. My favorite tincture for this build is definitely this one. I like grasping vine on hit. This build suffers from not being able to slow enemies very much outside of aspect of the spider. This really helps me slow enemies down a lot. It's very important since they're juiced out of their minds with the yellow wisp juice. Uh, also getting onslaught on this way. Haste is coming from the Watcher's Eye, which is over here, and that's why I have permanent phasing at all times. Uh, or rather, phasing is coming from the Watcher's Eye. And then we got Life on Hit, which isn't really that necessary in this build, but it's just a nice quality of life from getting vitality anyway. Let's put this build at a whopping 5k life, and over 6k life with the Blunderbore Gullhelm setup. And then that ends up being like 7k life, or 8k life once Headhunter buffs kick in. Uh, this build has, actually has a lot of life. And I even uh, did quality of life modifiers there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let me pull up the path of building right quick. Oh, just one second here. I actually forgot to do this part. I'll pull my link from my Twitch. You can go over to my Twitch, follow there, and you get a lot of commands in there, which you can see. One of them is exclamation point POB. You can always see the latest path of building. Which I'm going to show you now. Import it right here. And this should be the latest iteration of the build. Alright, so looking at around 2.5 million DPS. Oh, we got the rage. We got 83, 427. That doesn't factor in the tincture, however. 
I believe. The tincture increased, 30% increased flask effect. Oh, that reminds me, I almost forgot. Um, maybe before we forget here, let's talk about the Warden of the Magi. So a lot of people suspect that the Tribalist is the best ascendancy. Well, maybe, you know, I think if you got to literally cherry select your charms, it probably is. Uh, but it's a lot easier to get tincture set up and rolling, and I did have Calling Strike on there as well. And I don't get much benefit out of, I don't get any benefit out of increased additional arrows. So I don't feel like trying to get the charms is that necessary. Also really like Detect Evil. If you go and watch the map showcase again, you can see I can actually uh, see where the rares and uniques are. Even in the Wisp Realm is surprisingly useful there. And just some increased Wisp found. But yeah, the Tincture tech is all here. Not trying to poison or anything. This damage doesn't have any hit base damage. So there's no point in trying to run like Poison Tincture. In fact, all my damage is physical or chaos. Anyway, uh, so... Yeah, that's uh, me choosing the Warden of the Magi. So I recognize that the Tribalist is strong too. But for this build, I think Warden of the Magi is uh, maybe not categorically best, but uh, absolutely suitable, especially for the budget we're on. Okay, back to the path building. Here we go. Uh, effective health pool, decent 36. Okay, not that impressive, but it's all right. I could use some more evasion for sure. Uh, yeah, just take a look at whatever numbers you want there. Increased effective flask is 50% here. Are really good and then 30% for magic and then 30% more for uh from the tincture which is pretty wild all the regen people always ask where do you get your regen from well here it is all right i got uh, some regen from the helmet i got some more regen percent regen from the helmet i got regen while moving regen from vitality regen if i've used a flask recently a life flask and then 6.15 percent life regen from this flask suffix uh that came on the rarity flask next to the tincture that is also magic <laughs> that's why i got all that percent uh life regen and uh, yeah anyway also uh the mana reservation you know mana re reservation you can probably look in there if you want let's go over to the uh config okay so the config i'm always moving yep always moving no power charges they got frenzy charges endurance charges rampage is on this invictus weapon swap which i suppose i technically forgot about i got this invictus metal weapon swap here and I am using a cute little thing in this. Leap Slam, Awaken Chaos Damage, Chance to Poison, Faster Attacks, Wither Touch. Just trying to get a little bit of damage to get the Fortify to work. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, trying to get that to, that to go. Kind of rough. But anyway, um, yeah, there it is. All right. Faster attacks also really nice there. So I was using a shield and stuff there, but I wanted some Victus weapon swap. Okay, uh, back into config. Here we go. So that's where Rampage is. Whoops. Okay, I have Onslaught. Yep, through the Tincture, phasing permanently. Alchemist Genius, always Rage. I got around, floating around 15 Rage. Uh, this is with Berserk up. Last active, yep, okay. Enemies hindered, absolutely. That's a decent amount of damage there, right? Blind, yep, okay. Enemies are not shocked or anything like that. Okay, three aspects of spider things. Four pods overlapping, Ah, eh, maybe, maybe not. Anyways, against Guardian Pinnacle boss, usually it would be against uh, not a boss. Uh, but yeah, that's where that's set up. So that is with Berserk active. So those numbers, you know, the number is halfway respectable. It may seem a little bit low, but you got to understand this is very reliable damage. It doesn't matter whether I've hit 100 buffs or not. Uh, it doesn't matter whether I crit or not. It doesn't matter where the monsters are standing. They're going to be suffering damage from the pools, and that is going to be up at all times. So Caustic Arrow is not uh, all of the damage. There's some of that there. It's only like 800k with uh, Toxic Rain, apparently. And when I get Val Caustic Arrow in there, my damage basically doubles. Uh, or better effectively okay so i think uh that's it i think we're done with that so that's gonna be it for the showcase hope you enjoyed everything this build has been quite fun but challenging and unfortunately not tailored very well for the league mechanic but it did enable me to to f foresee with open eyes the potential of doing lower tier maps which i think really helped the community so i'm kind of grateful for that hopefully that has served you all very well but I'm going to be pretty soon moving back up to tier 16, I think, going to a Tornado Shop build. I'm going to try to do with Elemental Tornado Shop first because I just want to. I've never actually ran a pure Elemental Tornado Shop build. I like to try Anger out and I got. I might even use like the Poison Tincture. I might do some cool things with that. I don't know. We'll see. 
Uh, but look forward to, you know, another build showcase in the future, for sure, uh, in a while, after a few mirrors. <laughs> after I've consumed a few mirrors. Uh, but hey, I got one mirror now already, and quite a few divines, so I, I'm, I'm good. And I need to go back in and loot that map, I almost forgot. <laughs> so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to leave you now, uh, you know, with your druthers. Enjoy uh, your time in this league. Leave a comment in the description if you want, or in the comments if you want. Uh, ask me questions. I might have left some things out, but, uh, you know, pumping out so many videos, always forgetting things. Again, sorry, max roll links uh, don't seem to be working right now, so you just have to take a snapshot of the Atlas, but the path building link will be in there. It'll be working fine. Uh, so that's it. I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.